Welcome back. Today, I'm going to take you on a year-long journey where I develop a bit of tech nobody asked for and nobody needs. A bit of tech I came up with as a joke, fully expecting someone else to call my bluff and make it before me. But like many things in life, you must be the change you want to see in the world. So here we are, and here I am. To start this story, some background on hit detection. For a while now, we've had a fairly reliable method of detecting when a player hits a mob or another player, and when a player is hit by a mob or another player. This method used some fairly heavy advancement triggers to do the bulk of the detection, but it's not too heavy to be unusable. The idea behind it is we add a bunch of tags to an entity. Those tags represent the individual bits of an ID number that is assigned to the entity. When a player hits or is hit by an entity, the player is rewarded an advancement with some specific criteria. The criteria in that advancement has conditions that check those bit tags. And in the reward function, you can reconstruct the ID of the entity based on what criteria was rewarded. In the snapshot 23w03a, there was a glimmer of hope for something better. The execute on syntax was added. It seemed there was a, now a different way to do it that didn't require those bulky checks. However, this did have a mildly annoying edge case in the case of damage over time potentially causing false positives. Basically, the idea for the simpler version is when a player hits any mob, we check all mobs to see if they've been damaged this tick, and if they have and their attacker is that player, then we know what mob was hit by that player in this tick. However, the attacker relation is preserved for a while after you attack a mob. So. What happens if a mob that has been hit previously by a player takes damage at the same time that you hit another mob? Well, you get that false positive. So due to that little edge case, I usually stick to the advancement only method for anything I need it for. Now all of that is to say that currently the meta for hit detection uses advancements, which only trigger when a player is involved. So what about the case of mob on mob attacks? Well, when 23W03A came out, I had an idea for a generalized hit detection system. However, it had a missing piece. For me to explain what that missing piece is, I have to first explain what the idea is. Basically, my idea is, every tick, I just check all entities that can be hurt, and see if they've been hurt. And if they have been hurt, I use execute on attacker to get the entity's attacker. And that would work to detect if an entity was hurt, and what hurt it. However, an entity holds on to its attacker relation for a while after it's been attacked, as I said earlier, meaning if an entity is attacked and then takes some damage from any other non-entity source, it would return a false positive, yet another false positive. So the missing piece is some way to change or remove the attacker of an entity. There was the option of summoning an arrow or some other projectile to damage the entity, but that would require a delay of 10 ticks before I apply the damage, and it would be very visually obvious that something is happening. Another option is to just kill and resummon an identical entity, although this would have the problem of not retaining the entity's target, as well as the obvious resummoning. So I dropped the idea and moved on to other things. Then 23W06A hit. Display entities, execute summon, and slash damage. Could this be it? A way to clear an attacker? Sadly, not really. I'd still have to wait 10 ticks before I could damage an entity again. So it's just the same method again, just slightly less obvious. So again, I waited. And in 1.19.4 pre-1, potions no longer have glint, and less importantly, the bypasses cooldown damage type tag. But what does that mean? Well, it means I can specify damage to be able to damage something in the same tick it was previously damaged. I could finally do it. I could clear an attacker of an entity without it being horribly obvious. However, I didn't feel like it at the time, because I had other stuff going on in my life, so I shelved the idea for, uh, 14 months. In those 14 months, I had occasionally brought up the idea as a joke, but never really did it. But one day I finally decided to see if it would actually work. So I sat down and coded a prototype. And that prototype consisted of 12 commands. And two of those commands being really bad and arguably not worth the information this grants you. But I had it. A generalized entity hit detection. Or as I call it, universal entity on entity attack events. Also known as... E so that is the tale of yet another utility data pack I have made that nobody will use because it's only marginally useful and not hard to make yourself. Thanks for watching. See you next time. So I had just finished this. I was just about to start editing this video and we got a snapshot. It was a Friday. I didn't expect it. I didn't expect to get any of this, but we got something big. We got custom enchantments. And with those enchantments comes effects. 
And one of those effects is to just run a function. And there's triggers to run effects. And one of those triggers is a post attack trigger. And you can specify what entity you want to run a function as. So you can specify when an entity gets hurt and it is wearing an item enchanted with this with a custom enchantment that'll run a function, you can say, run this function as this entity, and it just works. And it works for doing entity on entity hit detection. So you can just have all of this custom damage detection without having to check every single tick to see if an entity's been hurt. I mean, it does require you to actually have every entity wearing a piece of armor enchanted with your custom enchantment, but it is a better trade-off than the performance loss, at least in my opinion.